Ready to dominate at the plate? Blast Baseball is trusted by more major league and college teams than any other hitting solution. The Blast sensor attaches to the knob of any bat, providing real-time feedback with every swing. Go to BlastMotion.com and enter code NOWD1 at checkout to save $25. All right, everybody. It is 9 o'clock. Let's get right into it. We do this show every Monday through Thursday at 9 p.m. Eastern on X Spaces. I'm Alan Gay, and this is Now D1 Speaks. Man, we got a big show tonight. I have really been looking forward to this. We have got a storied program. We got a big time coach with us. We got uh, Coach Brad Hill. He is the head baseball coach at Emporia State. Coach Hill, are you there? I am here. Hey, thank you so much for joining us. I think this is going to be a fantastic conversation. Absolutely appreciate you uh, being part of our show. So, hey, Coach, let's kind of kick this thing off, you know. I would love to know a little bit about you and your background, you know, primarily, you know what, where did you go and play college baseball? And ultimately what really led you into the coaching profession? Well, ironically, I played baseball at Emporia state. How about that? (laughs) (laughs) So I've come home. I am back home and getting to coach mom a mater. It's a thrill. It's exciting. And I uh, couldn't be happier with, you know, the opportunity to get back into college baseball to, to be at this place. So it's a very special place to me and, and uh, so, so many people. But uh, now I grew up in Kansas. I, I'm a small-town kid, graduated 27 kids in my high school class, not many. And so Emporia, Emporia State was, was a big school to me, quite honestly. So a lot of opportunities, uh, lots of junior colleges here in Kansas and could have had an opportunity to go play junior college baseball, um, Fort Hay State and Emporia were two four-year schools that recruited me, Wichita State, you know, tinkered with me, maybe a little walk-on situation. But Emporia, was, to me, fit what I wanted. Um, it was a, a school that, that uh, was a teacher's college. I was going to be a teacher and a coach, kind of following my, my family's footsteps. My brother played baseball at Emporia. My dad got his master's from Emporia. And... Uh, um, Dave Bingham was the head coach uh, at the time, and obviously he's a Hall of Fame coach. He was on two Olympic staffs, and Emporia just fit. You know, it was just one of those things where as as a high school player trying to find what fits what you're looking for the best, and I felt like Emporia uh, Emporia did that for me. And so uh, played at Emporia State, was drafted twice out of Emporia, um, and uh, had the opportunity to go play four and a half years in the Meyer Leagues, made the double A, and kind of tapped out and decided to jump into college coaching hey kansas is obviously in your blood emporia state is in your blood take a step back what year was that when you were a freshman at emporia state it was 1981 so i graduated in 80 and obviously went in the fall of 80 and in spring of 81 was my my uh, first uh, i was spring season here at emporia that's big time stuff, and I'm. I think I heard you correctly. Your high school had twenty seven seniors. Yeah, we it was twenty seven kids in our graduating <laughs> class. So we we were two small towns put together, six miles apart, Canton and Galva, and we were called Canton and Galva. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. So where did you play high school baseball? I mean, how in the world did Emporia State find you, or how did you find Emporia State in 1981? Uh, there's no high school baseball at Canton Galva. So I, I ran track to get in shape for summer American Legion ball in McPherson. So uh, um, that's where I played at. Actually, my, my brother and my dad and, and uh, Vance Carlson, who was a – a big leaguer and, and pitched in the big leagues was my legion coach. And so I had great coaching and, and, uh, way Emporia state found out about me was my brother. My brother was a, was a, a GA at Emporia state. And, uh, back, uh, right before they won actually a national championship in 78, he was a GA for him and, and, uh, stayed in contact with coach Bingham. And he, he told him that, Hey, you need really to go see my brother play. And, funny story I tell is that he went to Newton, Kansas to watch me and I was pitching and uh, they brought me in in the last inning to try to close it out and I proceeded to walk three guys and hit a guy in the head. And uh, <laughs> so 
as I'm as we're driving home with my parents, I'm in the back seat with tears in my eyes, thinking, "Well, I blew that. I'm not going to Emporia State." Lo and behold, Coach Bingham calls me and says, "Hey, I want you to come up on a visit and, and check out Emporia." We did, and when we get there, I'm kind of like, "Coach," he goes, "You know what did you see?" I said, "I hit, I walked three guys and hit a guy in the head." He goes, "Yeah, but you had three hits." And two of them were doubles. And he goes, I think you're a hitter in college, not a pitcher. So that's that's how my career got started there. Man, that is awesome. So you were a position player for Emporia. I, I was a position player, yes. Okay. And you said you were drafted twice. So the first time, hey, man, why didn't you go through with it? What, what led you back to Emporia? Uh, the number 827. Uh, was the number because that's where I was drafted. I was the last pick of the 1983 draft. So that's, that's my claim to fame. The very last pick of that 1983 draft, 51st round, last pick. That's my claim to fame. The next year I actually went 15 rounds higher and had a worse year, but that's kind of the way baseball works sometimes. <laughs> Man, that's cool stuff, Coach Hill. I mean, <laughs> hey, I, I got to guarantee you, man, somebody that's drafted in the 800s, hey, you were drafted. That is unbelievable. <laughs> I think I heard a stat the other day. It wasn't too long ago. I think it was something like only 25,000 people have ever played professional baseball. And, you know, you, you kind of look at the population just as it stands today. It's, what, right around 8 billion people? I mean, the opportunity – that you had to be drafted twice, regardless of what that number is, that's the elite of the elite. That's phenomenal, man. What an unbelievable story. So the second time you were drafted, who drafted you? The Rangers. You know. Rangers got me both times. I had, I had the scout fooled a little bit. So uh, Lee <laughs> Anthony. Lee Anthony's old scout here in Kansas and was here forever, and, and uh, he got me both times. I love it, man. So let me ask you. All right, so now you're the coach, right? You're the head coach. You're back. Emporia State's got a ton of tradition. I mean, there's been a lot of coaches that have kind of come out of there as well. And, I mean, they've just had a great ride, obviously. But let me ask you for this season, as you kind of roll into it, what's the expectations for your, your, your ball club? Well, I think the expectations are always going to be you set a standard of what you want to be. You know, you're trying to get an identity. And Emporia State's always been known for, for toughness, uh, kids that play hard, kids that are blue-collar kids. And, and uh, we, we obviously want, want to set the tone and be that type of a team. And, and so that, that's kind of part of it this, this fall is, is, you know, we're trying to, you know, how, how do you don't beat yourself? You know, I kind of, biggest thing is how do you don't beat yourself? You know, make routine plays and, and be competitive at the plate, you know, not striking out as much and getting runs in from third base less than two outs. And, and uh, just, you know, how the, how the pitching picks up the hitting when the hitting doesn't hit and how the hitting picks up the pitching when the pitching is bad. And so you're just trying to teach those lessons and, and help kids learn the game and, and uh, what it takes to, to, to play winning baseball. And that's kind of what we're trying to do this fall right now. Absolutely, man. I can tell you, man, I can just feel the passion in your voice and uh, the love of the game. I got to tell you, man, I, you got a great presence. I can only imagine – the guys, there, no question in my mind, they're able to respond to you. I mean, right off the bat, we've only been on the phone here for just a couple of minutes, and instantly, I'm just drawn in, man. You got a great presence. I love it, Coach Hill. So let me ask you something. I mean, you've obviously been at the D1 level, you've been at the D2 level. You know, it, what what's really kind of the difference between the two when it really comes down to just recruiting and developing these uh, ball players? Yeah, I think more than anything else, it's it's just the depth of your program. You know, just you know, you're not probably going to have players, you know, on your bench uh, in Division Two um, that that can play at the D1 level, and 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 obviously maybe not even your whole starting lineup. So even I was at Central Missouri, we won the national championship in in uh, uh, 2003, and you know, probably seven of the nine starters on that team were Division One players. And uh, and probably five or six of the pitchers were Division One pitchers, but but you know we still had another, you know, seventeen eighteen kids that probably were not Division One players, but they were good solid kids. You know, they had a role. Uh, you know, I, I don't think my catcher was probably a Division One catcher, but Dad Gum, he was so important to our team because our pitchers loved pitching to him. He was a leader. 
Um, you know, maybe just didn't have that Division One arm, Division One talent, but dadgum, he, his intangibles were Division One in, in my opinion. And that's what, you know, that's what made us go. But that's probably the biggest difference, just going to be the depth of of what you have on your roster. Uh, Division One teams are obviously going to have a little more pitching and, and probably have a few more players on the bench from a position standpoint. They maybe just have a few a little bit higher skill level. Hey, good stuff. Hey, everyone that's joining us this evening, thank you so much for being here. We absolutely appreciate the support. Thank you for supporting Now D1 Speaks, and thank you for supporting Coach Brad Hill at Emporia State as well. Uh, we record this space. If you did get in late, don't worry about it. We're going to be able to re- retweet it out later in its entirety. You'll be able to hear the entire thing. And again, we're with uh, Coach Brad Hill. He's the head baseball coach at Emporia State. He's had a fantastic career, uh, kind of a storied career, and he's had a great program. He's led multiple divisions as well, and uh, we're we're just going to have a great evening this evening. And so let me ask you a little bit about that 2003 National Championship. Just kind of give us a – just kind of an overall feel of how that year came together. I love when you were kind of talking about, hey, we had a couple of D1 players, D1 arms, we had some D1 position players and so forth. But just kind of give us a sense of anytime you win a championship, you know, it doesn't matter what the sport is, what the level is. It's incredible. Not only do you have to have the talent, the buy-in, you got to have some luck. If you can remember kind of the overall sense of that year, just kind of talk to us about how it all came together. Yeah, you know, we had had a really good run. So 2000, um, so, so we, we actually went on a run of 50 wins for four years in a row. And uh, um, in 2000, and I think it was one, we finished second. Um, and, man, just, you know, you're just so close. You know, you're right there. You're knocking on the door so close and, and then in 2002, we were sitting in the driver's seat. We had to be beat twice. And Columbus State got us twice in 12 innings, two times. The back-to-back, back-to-back games, extra innings, 12 innings. They got us by one run. And, man, the heartbreak of those kids, that was – it was incredible. I mean, it was tough. And, you know, we come back the next year, and we got a lot of returning kids, added a couple nice little pieces to it, and – uh you know, you're right. Think, things have to go right. And lo and behold, we end up in that same scenario, uh, semifinals against Kennesaw State, and we're in extra innings against Kennesaw. I'm sitting there just going, oh, my gosh, this is deja vu. <laughs> and Kennesaw gets a leadoff hitter on. I think it's the 11th inning. And, uh, and I got an unbelievable, incredible athletic third baseman. And, and they bunt, and we just kind of sold out that they were going to bunt. He crashes. Well, he turns. He wings the ball to second base, and we go five, six, three double play <laughs> on the play. And the momentum swung, and he actually came up. And he got the game winning hit. Actually, my third base but that works. And we go on and the championship game. We're playing Tampa. Tampa's got a really good arm, but it's just one of those things. And you know, I'm shaking the hands as they give that. You know, they introduce everybody for that championship game. Introduce everybody, and I'm telling you. I walk out there and I'm looking in the faces of my guys. I'm like, we're, it's over. We're winning this game. I'm, <laughs> there was so confident, so calm, and and we did. We went on and we actually won pretty easily, to be honest with you. And, and it was just an unbelievable game, unbelievable time, and, and what a great, great group of kids. And they just went in the Missouri Hall of Fame here uh, a couple of years ago. Man, that is so cool. I'm sitting here grinning from ear to ear. And in many ways, I wish this was a Zoom call because, I mean, <laughs> I mean, I could just appreciate your passion. I mean, you're recalling things that happened 20 years ago like it happened yesterday. I love it. And I love the teams and the programs that you're mentioning. I mean, they're so big time, even today, right? I mean, Columbus State, I mean, give me a break. It's a big time school in Georgia. Kennesaw State, yes. that's the, a D1 program. Yeah. Tampa, Tampa is hey I'm in I'm in Orlando Florida I'm telling you Tampa is one of the best D2 schools you will ever face year in year out they are there you know and that's 20 years ago I mean these are big big time programs that you're talking about that you were playing against I love it yeah it was uh, it was good baseball I'm just telling you like I said there was uh and, and so even when I went to K State 
um, I had two kids did follow me and, and, uh, um, like I said, I could probably, honestly, I could have taken about five or six of those kids off that, that team, but, uh, <laughs> two of them did come with me. And then one ended up being like a 10th round draft pick with the Rangers and, and the other kid had a nice role to, you know, in the middle of relief for us. So that's just kind of telling you the type of kids. Ken, the Ken that came with me was, was an all big 12 player when he transferred and ended up being a 10th round draft pick. That's so, good stuff. Yeah. We good, had good, players. good stuff. Yeah, you did. And you know what? Hey, you always have to have a good player. That's right. Too, right. That's yeah, right. Yeah. They always make the coaches look <laughs> that good. That makes the no coach question. look a lot better. <laughs> no doubt sure. about it. <laughs> you know, it, uh, recruiting is the lifeblood. There's no question about it. So let me ask you something, though, about your coaching philosophies and so forth. I mean, you look at the tradition and the experiences you've had. I love what you just walked through in 2003. I mean, kind of thinking about that run up to that national championship. I mean, how does that affect the way you're even coaching today, the, the lessons that you learned and so forth? Well, I think, again, you're just trying to, you know, I've always said that, that when, a, when a team kind of coaches itself, when you can get the players at the top to take ownership of the program and, uh, um, you know, they don't allow those young kids to come in and, and stray away and they, they, they tell them what's established. You know, that, that was probably the easiest job I ever had with, with Central Missouri. I mean, and you got to think about when I came in, it was right after Dave Van Horn just won the national championship mm. at Central Missouri. So I came in right after him and, and uh, just a, a group of kids that, that, you know, their expectations were to win national championship. And, and so the kids coming in, those older guys would like, hey, look, yeah, we lift in the mornings, but we're going to come in and lift at night, too. So like, that's how you get strong and that's how you get physical and that's, you know, and, and outworking people. And, and so that was just kind of the mentality we had there is that those kids expectations um, were so high and the work ethic was so strong and the new kids coming in, they had to fall in line. If they didn't, I mean, they pretty much got cast aside. And, and so that's how they were able to kind of keep that thing going. Like I said, it, my job was really easy at Central Missouri. The kids ran the program. They policed the program. And they set the tone for, for the new kids coming in. Like, this is how we do it. And you fall in line or you get out. And when you have that happen, then you got a pretty good program going on. Yeah, obviously. You absolutely do, man. Thank you for walking through that. Hey, do you have any idea – the exact number of guys that you've coached that have been drafted or, or at least a, maybe a proximity? Yeah, it's, you know, so as a, as a head coach, probably I think it's been around 50, between 50 and 60. You know, we had quite a few kids at, at University of Kansas with an assistant coach. We had a nice group of kids that that, uh, that group in 1993 went to College World Series at the University of Kansas. We had about seven kids, six or seven kids drafted off that team. So um, that was that was that was kind of a major deal there too. That was <laughs> that that was maybe one of the biggest um, um, when you talk about achievements. Uh, that 1993 Kansas team going to the College World Series. Who was my former head coach at Emporia was the head coach at KU at that time, and uh, I mean that was that was crazy. We go to a regional, lose the first game of a regional at Tennessee, Clemson, Fresno State big time names in there and we ran back we won five games in a row to go to the college world series and kansas never even made a regional before that <laughs> they make regional and college world series so that was that was quite a thrill there too but we had some good players there but as a head coach uh i think you know when you kind of include also signing free agent around 60 around 60 kids Man, that's so cool. That's awesome. Thank you for that. Let me ask you about that 93. I mean, that's so cool. How do you catch lightning in a bottle like that? I mean, what what is it that kind of sparks something just out of the blue? Yeah, that was our coach, Dave Bingham. So uh, that guy, I'm just telling you, he was just driven. And I mean, he he was not satisfied. I mean, and again, and I'm I'm probably going to sit here and go be honest. I'm pretty transparent. I was just like so happy just to make a regional. You're sitting there in Kansas. They never, they never won anything in a hundred years of Kansas in baseball. And we're at a regional. We lose that first game. And I mean, we're having dinner that night and he's like, we're not losing. 
we're going to win. We're coming back through and winning this thing. And, and I'm sitting here with the other pitching coach who also was an Emporia state grad. And, uh, you know, I just know what I'm thinking. I'm going coach, man, you got like, we got to play Tennessee next. And they got like, (laughs) it's, they got like three or four big leaguers on that team. And man, lo and behold, you know, our guy goes out there, Jamie Splitorf, whose dad was Paul Splitorf, pitched in the Royals. He goes out there, and we win two to one over Tennessee. And then we get on, we get hot. And you know, you talked about luck, matchups. So uh, I, I got, I think we played St. John's, and uh, we beat them. And then the next one was Clemson. Well, Clemson was a free swinging team, man. I mean, they just they would swing, and we had a left hander. It was just wild enough that effectively wild guy. And I mean, they're, he's throwing it and they're chasing pitches. And next thing you know, we beat Clemson and you're, you're right. Just the matchups fell perfectly for us. And, you know, next thing you know, we're going to Omaha. Coach O, man, I am enjoying this evening so much. I'm sitting here thinking, man, this is 30 years ago. And you're talking about it honestly, (laughs) like it happened yesterday. I mean, the passion that you have and the, the, I mean, it just means a lot. Obviously the game means a lot to you and the guys that you, uh, that you represent, they recognize that and they respond to it, man. This is big time stuff. Thank you again so much for being here and just talking. I love it. I absolutely love it. Let me ask you something about like, kind of thinking about your big leaguers because that, that's where I was going and I got thrown off at the 93 season. <laughs> but your big league, right, your big leaguers, 50, 60, whatever the number is. Hey, kind of thinking about some young guys that are, that are coming along right now that are absolutely interested and probably have the skill set in playing in the big leagues. How do you keep them focused on developing, but also focused on the classroom? I mean, they got to have the, you know, if they're going through the college route, they got to have the grades. And if they don't have the grades, they're not going to be on the field. And if they're not on the field, they're not going to have an opportunity to get to the next level. How do you kind of marry those together and yeah. keep everything in perspective? Yeah. And that's the one thing I guess that, I don't really bend on that. You know, I just, I'm a firm believer that you do all things well and you're, you're committed to being the best you can be. And that means being, you know, doing the right things in the classroom. You go to class. I mean, we check classes and we have study tables and uh, you know, but yet at the same time, I'm also a firm believer that if you do have, you know, the commitment and, and uh, um, you know, you have that self-discipline, that, you know, you don't have to be in study table. I kind of let kids, you earn yourself in, you earn yourself out. You know, it's one of those things. But same time, I do feel responsible for kids and making sure that, you know, some kids do need that discipline. Some kids need that study table time. And they need to be told, hey, look, you're going to go get six hours this week of quiet time and be around tutors and, and make sure we are getting the education because obviously that is the main reason you're at school. So, but then we're also into being, you know, the right representatives of our university the baseball program off the field and doing the right things off the field and some community service type things. And, and just making sure again, that uh, the guys are making, you know, trying to make good choices and some guys won't make good choices, but our job is help them grow up and, and uh, not allow them to continue to make those same bad choices. And then obviously on the field, we want to be a first class organization on the field too. I'm just about doing things the right way, no matter what you're, you're doing, you want to do it the right way. Hey, again, everyone that's joining us this evening, thank you so much for being here. Thank you for the support. Now D1 Speaks, thank you for the support with uh, Coach Brad Hill as well. I mentioned earlier that we record this space so that we can retweet it out later. We also record it because we turn it into a podcast, and that podcast is simply Now D1 Speaks. And I got to tell you, it's on every platform that's out there. It's from Apple, YouTube, Google, Spotify, all the indies. It's everywhere, and it's actually got a – a really nice following. Generally speaking, for anyone that's new that's listening uh, this evening, our core audience is really college coaches, and our core guests are uncommitted prospects, whether they're in high school, uh, college, junior college, transfer portal, wherever they may be. It gives them an opportunity to be heard. And the college coaches really enjoy being able to kind of dial into this podcast. And the thing that we emphasize when we talk to the young committed prospects is not so much the achievements they've had on the field. Generally speaking, guys that we're talking to, you know what? They're already, they're big, they're fast, they're strong. They know how to play baseball. They've got an opportunity to go somewhere. 
the things that we really emphasize is their makeup. Who are they when they're not on the field? What kind of classes are they taking? What's their GPA? What's their SAT? How are they in the community? How do they treat their parents? How do they treat their coaches? What kind of teammate are they? How do they respond to adversity and so forth? And it just kind of gives them an opportunity to say, you know what? I'm a mature person and I'm growing. And hey, coach, if you're interested in me, I'm going to take care of my business off the field so that when I get to practice or I get to the game, we can focus on the things that are necessary for baseball and you're not going to have to babysit me. And I think that goes a long way with the coaches. And in many, and in many respects, it's that final little checkoff that they can say, you know what, this is absolutely someone that can represent our, our university. And I want to present them with an offer. So, Hey, tonight we're fortunate enough to have coach Hill with us. He's got a storied career. He's got a fantastic background. I mean, he is a national championship coach. He's had multiple uh, big leaguers that have come through his program. He's been drafted himself. Very, very fortunate. I mean, we, and also, so anyone that's listening, we don't know each other. I, I did not know coach Hill. I just reached out to him. I knew he was an impressive person. I wanted him to have an opportunity to kind of get into our forum. And I just reached out to him and said, would you like to do it? And instantly he said, yes. You know, when? When would you like me here? And just kind of gives you a, an idea of who he is and the type of character he has. So we're very, very fortunate to have him here with us this evening. Hey, uh, Coach Hill, thinking about uncommitted prospects, kind of give us a sense of, what does it take for a high school prospect in particular to really get on your radar? And, and once he's on your radar, kind of also give us a sense of maybe what a red flag potentially could come up that maybe pushes him off your radar. Yeah, I think obviously you're always going to look for, for skill and talent first. It's just it is what it is. Um, so you're looking for something there. Uh, you know, in the, in the skill set, whether it's arm strength, bat speed, uh, you know, pitchability, um, you know, speed. I mean, there's something there that, that you're looking for. Um, and then from there, you're trying to obviously watch how it plays in games. And I, I think what's, you know, it, that was a tough time. The, the COVID years when it was recruiting by video, hmm. I wasn't involved in that at that time. I was out of college baseball, but what a tough, tough time for coaches and kids, both, um, to have opportunities to be seen. Because you're right. When you start talking about, you know, you want to watch kids play games. I mean, <laughs> you can do the video thing, and, and you can see a kid that has, you know, can, can bang a ball. and Everyone's showing highlights. But, but how does he respond when he, you know, strikes out with the bases loaded? Um, you know, how, how does a pitcher respond when he gives up, you know, a, a three-run homer to give up a lead? And I think it's really important to see how kids respond to adversity, how they respond to failure a lot of times. And are they good teammates? Do they sit on the bench and pout? Or are they still a good teammate and they get up and, and they're involved in the game and involved in their teammates' success? And, and so those are things you're looking for, you know, body language. And there's a lot of things that you want to see that, as opposed to, like I said, just the number on the radar gun or, you know, whatever the exit velo might be and things that, that a lot of people – you know, look at, and I think those things are, they have their place, no question, but I'm an intangible guy, and, and I like guys that, that play hard, and, and guys that compete, and, and sometimes, like I said, they don't they don't have to, to, to throw 90 for me, that if they're an 85, 86 guy, and they're winners, that, that's good enough for me a lot of times, too, so, and then they're a good person, good student, those things all come into play on those, on that type of stuff, so, yeah, the red flag would be selfishness a lot of times, it's, that's that selfishness that, Again, a kid uh, uh, again has a bat, a bat or whatever. He sits on the bench. Next kid gets a big hit, a couple RBIs. He sits on the bench while the rest of his teammates are up there and and, and celebrating what, what's going on. So you know the kid that you know uh, the kid's the body language is a big deal. You know a kid that that wants to point fingers, whether it's an umpire or, or a teammate that makes an error. Those are things that will turn you off in a hurry. Good stuff right there. I got to tell you, man, that, that's the kind of thing. And thank you so much for walking through that. Thank you for your candor and your honesty. Those are the type of comments that really resonate, I hope, with uh, uncommitted prospects and certainly their families as well. And, and just to kind of get an understanding of, of what it really takes to be successful. Because in many ways, I mean, baseball, I got to tell you, man, baseball is a great life lesson. 
there's only a few guys. We talked about it earlier. I mean, there's only a very few guys, the elite of the elite, that have the opportunity to play at the next level. But there's so many super athletic guys that are going to have the chance to play college baseball. But guess what? They're going to go on with their life and they're going to have careers and they're going to have marriages and they're going to have relationships and they're going to have difficulties of whatever they are. And baseball kind of gives you that opportunity to be able to respond to those types of adversity in a positive manner as you go on in your life. And I think, you know, Coach Hill, probably, you know, hey, it was fun to talk about the 50, 60 guys that have been drafted in the major league man, I bet there's a ton of guys that weren't drafted that probably meant a lot more to you and you know exactly who they are. You could call them by name and you know even know what they're doing today. And they're probably making a huge impact in the world. And, and, you know, and ultimately, that's probably a bigger responsibility is having the opportunity to, to help mold and shape and develop men for tomorrow. Well, I think that's why we're in the business. I mean, it, yeah, obviously we love baseball. We love teaching baseball, coaching baseball. We love winning. But ultimately, you are trying to help young men to, to, to move on and get an education. And, and hopefully, like I said, the, the lessons that you're trying to teach on the baseball field carry over. And that's, that's you know, there, there are a lot of people out there who like to hire athletes. And athletes are disciplined. They're committed. And the work ethic that they get from, from the program or coaches they've been involved with is what carries them success after, you know, after, after their uh, um, careers are done. Because, again, baseball is going to be short-lived. Um, I mean, again, it's the, the percentages are, are so small uh, of guys who actually have a career out of, out of playing professional baseball. So if, if you get drafted, you're very, very lucky. If you get to play three or four years, you're very, very lucky. And if you make it to the big leagues, you're, you're very, very lucky. So – um, like I said, the, our, our job is to help them to to prepare for life after baseball and, and what that looks like. And, and I've, you know, probably the biggest compliment I've had, a few of my guys just, you know, go out and go, Coach, just, you know, they didn't understand those 5.30, 6 a.m.s when they were with me and they didn't like it. I'm sure they were saying a lot of bad things about me at the time. But, but uh, now they, I have a number of them come back and go, you know, just that work ethic that you instilled in us, we are absolutely kicking butt in the uh, working world, Coach, and we appreciate you know the the discipline and the and the work ethic you instilled in us because of the success we're having now. It's a big part of it. Hey, that's big time stuff again. And here's somebody who was lucky enough to be drafted twice, and he's talking about real world stuff right there and re- what really actually matters, man. That's awesome, Coach Hill. Thank you. Hey, let's let's talk about a little bit about recruiting. I mean, the landscape for recruiting has changed almost 180 degrees. I mean, you brought it up earlier, the COVID, kind of the COVID years and what that looked like and trying to recruit off videos and so forth. And even if, as you look at rosters today, I mean, you've got guys that have been there, you know, six years or maybe even more, who knows? I mean, the, you throw in that COVID year, it's kind of really skewed a lot of rosters, probably in the advantage of college teams to the disadvantage of athletes. And then, then you kind of look at the transfer portal as well. I mean, so much has changed in recruiting. Just as an overall picture, you know, where do you see Emporia State kind of fitting in? What's your niche? How are you taking advantage or maybe that's not the right word advantage, but how are you able to be successful in today's recruiting environment? Well, it's a little bit new for me again. So I've only been back in, you know, since June is when I when I took the job and I was at Northwestern two years ago, but really I didn't get there till August 1st, and and uh, we were done June 1st. So I really didn't get the recruiting uh, of the summertime there. But um, the biggest change, obviously, for me, it had just started. So when I was at K-State um, 2017-18, things had really started. That's when, when people were starting to go recruit freshmen and sophomores. And, mm. uh, you know, we, were, we just started kind of going the two classes back. So we were recruiting sophomores, and we just started doing that, and that was a big change for me at that time. And I, I don't know how coaches keep it straight, you know, when you're talking <laughs> to kids. Are you coming in two years, one year, or are you coming this year? I don't even know when you're coming. So how old are you? But uh, um, nowadays, you know, again, with, with the portal and things, I, I've always been a player development guy. I love coaching. I love teaching. I like watching kids develop. Some coaches like recruiting a lot of players, and kind of letting the 
and the players sort themselves out. I, I like I like getting my hands on kids and helping them develop. I feel like I'm a pretty good, uh, particularly from an offensive standpoint, being able to have a lot of success with offensive players and helping them develop. Um, so I, I like, you know, for me, I like the young uh, position player. I like getting freshmen and helping kind of groom them through the system. Um, and then, you know, if we have to maybe do some transfer pitching is a possibility here at Emporia because it's different. So in wherever you go, you have to make adjustments. So I, I know at Central Missouri, um, you know, in, in Missouri, there's, you know, there's Crowder and there's uh, Maple Woods were about the only two junior colleges in the state on my side of the state. And so that opened up the door for a lot of freshmen, you know, an opportunity to recruit freshmen. We have Missouri, very good. Missouri State, very good. But at the same time, there's a lot of good players in Missouri. Kansas City is a big metro area. And so we had a lot of, of, of kids that we brought in as freshmen. Um, in Kansas, you got to make a little bit of adjustment. So at Emporia State, we have 26 junior colleges in the state of Kansas. Hmm. And we also have another five Division II schools. And then we have three Division I schools. So there, there's a lot of, you know, there's a lot of competition for these good players. And everybody wants the same players. I mean, man, I'm, you know, I'd love to have players who are going to go to K-State or Wichita State. That'd be awesome to get those kids here. We want the same players. We're just not going to get the same players, you know. So we have to kind of be smart on what we're doing. But I still like to recruit the freshmen. Um, uh, so maybe we expand and go elsewhere. Maybe we go to Arizona maybe into Texas a little bit or whatever, um, have the opportunity to recruit some freshmen down there. It's a possibility. But I also, like I said, think that uh, um, we have to be smart on what we're doing and we, the transfers do come in. And obviously the portal, it does create some more opportunities. I probably think, and again, I speak candidly, junior college people may not like me saying this, but I think it's really hurt junior college. I think everyone's looking for the four-year transfer first and then the two-year transfer now it becomes even third because they go more four-year transfer, high school kid, and then junior college kid. And, again, I know many of my junior college friends may not like me saying that, <laughs> but I think that's the reality of it right now, um, no doubt. I, I, have enough, I have enough of my guys in Division One. I, I know where they're looking right now, and, and it's not junior college first right now. I got to tell you, Coach Hill, this has been an awesome, awesome night. I Again, I can't thank you enough for hopping on and just listening to your experience, your passion, your knowledge. I got to tell you, man, I'm certainly a dad. I had, I had a son that was fortunate enough to play college baseball. I, I understand a little bit about the recruiting experience and so forth. And I got to tell you, man, as a dad, a father, um, there is no question in my mind if I had an opportunity to talk to you that I would feel 100% confident in my son uh, being a part of your program. I mean, there's, you know, you just absolutely kind of uh, put that position out there that you're someone that is uh, going to be able to take care of them. So this has been a, just an awesome night. Just thank you very much for jumping on. I hope you've been able to enjoy it to this point as well. Oh, it's been fun. I love talking baseball. You know, I mean, college baseball is the best experience you can have. And, I just tell kids that. I said, man, I mean, I put it in Poirier State, you know, and, and there, there's there's schools out there that that just offer you just that opportunity, uniqueness of getting to play college baseball, the friendships, relationships. You know, I went I went and played in the golf where well, I didn't play because I'm a horrible golfer. But I went <laughs> down to Tucson uh, in, in June when I first got the job here. And they have a huge golf tournament down there in, in uh, a memorial tournament for Rich all day. Huge. He played in Poirier State. He was good friends with Coach Bingham. And obviously, he's huge impact in Tucson. And I saw teammates down there that I hadn't seen in 40 years. And you pick up – it was like we never left. It was like <laughs> 40 years, and we're just – I mean, we're telling stories. We're talking. It's like we didn't miss, miss a beat. And that's what college baseball can do for you. And I just tell kids, if you really want to play, you know, there's a place for you to play. It doesn't have to be, you know, it doesn't have to be SEC. It can be anywhere where you're getting that opportunity to get on the baseball field and create those relationships and get an opportunity to, to enjoy it. Amen, brother. I love that. Thank you so much. Hey, let's kind of wrap this up tonight. And I'm thinking about uh, – 
a, a, a really good question to kind of end it with. And that's really younger guys, uh, probably specifically, maybe even like freshman high schoolers, you know, and these are just young guys that are really good at baseball and they want to be good at baseball for as long as they can be. What kind of advice would you give to them so that they would put themselves in a really good position so that they can transition to the next level? And maybe who knows, even maybe the level that comes after that as well. Yeah, well, number one is that, that if you're a freshman, you better get in the classroom and hammer out those grades. Get off to a great start, right? It's it's kind of like that. It's kind of like that batting average, man. It's you get it way up there. It's a lot. It's a, it's a lot tougher <laughs> than it is to go up. And same thing in the classroom. Get off to a great start academically and open up doors. I mean, you're trying to open up doors academically, so there are no restrictions on where you can go. Um, take care of business because if you get off a rough start, it is hard to make it up. And then number two is, you know, you, you try, and, I, I, and I like kids that play other sports. I mean, if you like playing football, go play football. If you like playing basketball, go play basketball. Um, I, I like kids to go play other sports if that's what they want to do. I think there's too many kids that try to get so focused and, and, and try to specialize in one sport. And then next thing you know, you got some burnout going on. So playing another sport, if that's what you want to do, do it. May have to make that decision. Junior, senior year, maybe you make that decision um, to, to specialize in. And then from there, probably what I tell kids is the biggest thing is, man, the strength factor. Uh, it's just when you go to the college campus, you just see kids that are 15, 20 pounds heavier, stronger, more physical and mature. So the, the more, you know, the earlier you can get a start trying to get more physical and stronger than that, that needs to start to happen as well. But, but, uh, I like kids to be well-rounded, you know, you, you compete a little differently when you're on a football team on a basketball court. I, I like that different competition. I like, again, uh, the fact that it brings out, uh, you know, having to be a different type of teammate in those type of sports. But, but, uh, again, that, that's kind of my, my thing is the academics, you got to get, get grounded, get that great foundation to start from there. And then, like I said, you kind of go from there. If you're a different multi-sport guy, go for it. If you want to specialize in baseball, I still going to advise you to try to take some time off, man. Don't burn yourself out. Man, that's great advice, Coach Hill. I love it. That's three easy pieces to uh, really remember, especially as a freshman. I mean, that's where you're kind of kicking it off. Man, be strong in the classroom. Diversify on as many fields as you can. And then hit the weight room. I mean, everybody can do that. I think that's fantastic advice. I love it. The classroom always start fast. It's so hard to make up those grades, man. If you can get out there early and quick and make a bunch of A's, it's amazing how you can kind of keep that level up for the next three years, right? But if you start out slow and be able to overcome that, it is so difficult. Start fast, guys. That is great advice from Coach Hill. Start fast. And if you have an opportunity, hey, man, if baseball is your number one sport, but you can still jump out there and play a little bit of basketball. You may not be the starter at basketball, but you'll learn to be a good teammate, be a good contributor, and that will pay off on the baseball field big time. And you got to be strong, man. Your body's your, your billboard. They always talk about that. You got to, hey, man, when you show up as an 18 year old, you're competing against 21 and 22, maybe even a 23 year old. There's a big difference in those years. You got to be strong. I love it, Coach Hill. Man, that's fantastic advice. It's been an awesome evening. I mean, I have just been blown away. I'm so happy for you that you kind of get to return to your roots. I'm happy for Emporia State to be able to have the opportunity to have you represent them. I'm just really, really excited about your future and, uh, and, and the school's future as well. I think you guys are absolutely on the right path. And I really appreciate you being a part of the show this evening. You bet. Well, like I said, I love college baseball, and and uh, like it's a great, great experience for me. And like I said, if you can impact or you know encourage kids to to try to do it, like I said, you, you got to do it. And like I said, there's a lot of good places out there, a lot of good coaches, and and uh, college baseball is the best. So I love talking about it and trying to help kids find a find a place. That's awesome stuff. I can't think of a better way to end it. Thank you again for being here. Hey, everybody that joined, thank you so much. Absolutely appreciate it. And I think we should just end it here for this evening. So good night. Hey, let me ask you something. Are you ready to dominate at the plate this season? Blast Baseball is the number one hitting improvement solution. 
Trusted by more major league, college, and travel ball teams than any other, the Blast sensor attaches to the knob of any bat, providing real-time feedback with every swing. Metrics are automatically sent to a smartphone app, generating insights that allow you to analyze and improve your hitting like never before. Go to BlastMotion.com and enter code NOWD1 and you will save $25 at checkout. Unlock your potential with Blast. Blast. 